The weekly Industry Angel podcast hears from business leaders and entrepreneurs who share their stories and that all-important light bulb moment. This can inspire us all and maybe scratch that itch and kickstart that idea that keeps you awake at night. Welcome to episode 43 of the Industry Angel and welcome to spring. The crocuses and the daffodils are out, the sun is shining, the days are longer. Thankfully, I can run in the hills without the need of a head torch and falling down a pothole. Don't ask. Uh, Thanks for your recent feedback regarding the last episode with fellow sand dancer Jeff Thompson. If you caught the bonus episode, you would have heard me ask Jeff, who's the chairman of South Shields FC. I asked him questions from our fans. The guys got in touch via Facebook and we asked him various questions about the future of the club. You would have heard us mention about getting to Wembley or the potential of getting to Wembley. Don't count your chickens, Ian. And I'm pleased to say we got through the quarterfinal and we've progressed on to the semis. So if we get through these two legs, it's Wembley bound. Our town is super excited to say the least. And I must thank all the South Shields fans for getting in touch and the send the servers crazy with downloads. Thanks to today's sponsor, our awesome friends at Athena Risk. Athena are a global security management company. They have established offices here in Newcastle in the UK and Tampa, Florida. Athena assists corporate business travelers and their organizations to operate and travel safely whilst on overseas business. Check out the guys at athenarisk.com. As you know, I'm determined to keep this show diverse and I hope you find this episode interesting and something that you can action whatever your circumstances. Today we have Elaine Heaney. Elaine is the CEO of Merch Entrepreneur and host of the Merch Entrepreneur podcast. Elaine is also best-selling author, international keynote speaker, movie producer, Amazon FBA and Merch Consultant. Welcome to the show, Elaine. Hey, how are you? Thanks so much for inviting me. Not a problem. Well, that's a big mouthful. You've got a, a CV from someone who's in the 60s. So what's going on, Elaine? You've done so much. I've been a bit busy over the last couple of years. <laughs> I used to, yeah, I used to have a proper job, but I left that behind and then, yeah, got busier. So ah, so did you, did you fire yourself? We're, we're, all, over, we're all, all over that on this show, firing yourself and going on your side <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I um, I used to work in a in an office in Dublin city centre, and my job was fine, and I really liked the people that I worked with. But uh, I was a project manager, and the issue was, um, well, there was two issues. Number one, like I'm a country girl, and what I was qualified to do or experienced in, the only jobs were in the city, and I could kind of see like long term, I'd have to end up getting like a house in the suburbs, and like I love doing horses, and there's no way my house my horse could live in the suburbs, so that was a bit of an issue. And um, but I guess yeah, it was. I could kind of see the path that was kind of appearing in front of me if I was to stay there. And like there was like once or twice people would say, you know, if you play your cards right and do some more like leadership training, maybe one day you could be a senior project manager. And I, like, my, <laughs> I mean, that's my boss, basically. And I was looking at my bosses and they had no lives. Like they just worked so hard and they were answering emails at two and three in the morning. And I was like, that is not what I want for my life. So, yeah, one day. Um, I like I still I didn't have a plan or anything but one day a friend of mine bounced over to to my desk he was a programmer like a proper programmer and he was like Elaine look at this I was like what's this and he showed me his iPhone now I didn't have an iPhone I didn't really know what apps were or anything and he's like look at this and he showed me um, a quiz that he had made on his iPhone like a really really basic quiz based actually on I think it was on Carnation Street (laughs) just that I don't even know what the quiz (laughs) was about like this was a couple of years ago and he's like, guess how much money I'm making on this every week? And I was like, um, I don't know. He's like, $200. I was like, that's insane. That's crazy. So um, I, yeah, that just kind of stuck in my head a bit. And then I went home one Christmas and I decided that if he could make an app, and he was a programmer and he made it himself, that I could do it. And I'm not a programmer and I can't make apps or anything. So I sat down on my computer one Christmas Eve and I Googled how to make an app. 
Um, Because I just thought, like, there must be some way for idiots like me to figure it out, like WordPress, like drag and drop or something. So um, I stayed glued to my computer. I did take a break for an hour over Christmas Day for Christmas lunch and then back to the computer. And I just stayed there the whole time. There was steam rising off my keyboard. And by midnight, no, five to midnight on New Year's Eve, I had my first Android app published on the Android App Store. Uh, which was crazy so I was working while everybody else was partying but yeah I was so excited and so happy that I actually like made one so what I did was while like I was still working but in the evenings and in the weekends I was kind of dabbling around with the making these apps and so after about six months I wasn't doing like a ton of work but I was doing a couple of hours you know here and there I had I had 30 apps published um, on the two app stores, mainly iPhone, because they seem to be selling better. And the end, then work actually got busy and I wasn't able to do them anymore. So I had to kind of just forget about it. But every day I was earning money. I used to get an email from Amazon, or, or no, from App Annie, I think it was, telling me um, how much money I earned the previous day. And that first year I made $12,000 in, um, in income just from doing this weekend evening part-time stuff for half of the year. So I was like, oh my God. So like, I was kind of thinking if I, if I put like, I don't know, seven or eight hours into it for half a year and I make $12 or $12,000, what if I was like to do it full time? Would, could I multiply that by, you know, two or three or four? So this was definitely like, you know, something that I was thinking about a lot. And then, but I couldn't quit work because I was in the middle of like a really large project that was really important and I was kind of managing the whole thing. So I didn't want to just like walk away. So I finished that and then, when the opportunity came up and they weren't too sure what they were going to put me on to next and the words or, or the well I guess they were talking about 11 months of documentation as a possibility for what I'd be doing next and when I heard that I was like guys I think I have to go so um so yeah quit the job I didn't just quit and be like oh I'm never going to return I was like I'm going to quit I'm going to take three or four months and I'm going to try this app thing and I don't know if it's going to work properly or not like full-time I don't know and after three or four months I was going to just try and work really hard and then I was going to review it and see was there enough potential for me to keep going or was it something that I tried really hard but I couldn't make work and then I would just go back and get another job so that's what actually got me started and was there an opening to go back to your job for you after after three or four months if it didn't work um uh, I well I mean I had a lot of friends still there so you know they they do hire project managers every now and again in in that company so I'm sure if they heard I was free at some stage in the next while there would be a job eventually I might have to wait for a couple of months or something but all right so you didn't burn your bridges didn't run out the door and just no 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 no, no, no I mean I had lots of friends there they were really nice and they were kind of excited for me to go and try it you know so yeah they were they were quite encouraging actually So you mentioned about the $12,000. Was that over the 30 apps? And if so, what were the apps all about? Uh, The apps were, you see, I'm a little bit horse crazy. And so when I was at this stage, I had a horse website that I was kind of just writing blogs and different things on. And so the only, when I heard like about my friend, like making this quiz app and I was like, yeah, okay, I want to do an app, but I had no idea what to do an app about. I had no idea about market research. I'd never done anything like that. So I was just trying to think what content I had that I could make into an app. And all I could think of was this horse website that I had. So um, yeah, I don't know, was it a good idea or not? But yeah, my first 30 apps were all horse related. They were like educational, or just like silly horse apps that played like horse sound effects or <laughs> like they were bad. Like just think bad and then it was it was probably worse. Like you have to <laughs> you have to, you have to record your horse. <laughs> no, I think I just found them on audio sites in the web or something. Oh yeah. Okay. But they were re- like they were really bad, but it was just because at the time the opportunity was there because the app store was still quite sure. young. And so cool. I could actually, you know, put these up and people would buy them. Do you think that's possible now, Elaine? You know, you know, you, you mentioned there that was in the use of, of the app store. Do you think yeah. that's, yeah, you could still do that oh, no, now? Sorry. Someone's listening. No, 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 um, no. Things have changed a lot. Like any platform, they kind of mature. Like at that stage, they were like yeah. they just wanted people to come in and publish anything because they wanted apps in the store, and there wasn't a ton of them in there. So that's like the stage I got in. Whereas now, it's it's evolved a lot more. The standards are a lot higher. You can't just put in basic little apps that don't really do a lot. They there's a um, an approval process, and they'll actually won't they won't approve them for you. So no, now it's a lot more competitive. It's a lot more sophisticated, and definitely what I was doing back there a couple of years ago wouldn't really work now. Right. So are you are you done with the apps issue now? You you, you know no more development. Never say never. I haven't done any for <laughs> for quite a while, but never say never. 
That's mad, isn't it? A country girl project manager turns developer and makes $12,000 instantly. I, uh, well, well, not instantly. Like it took a year, but I was just, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like anything that if you, if you try something new, like you've no idea what's going to happen and you know, maybe nothing will happen, but by trying it, you've opened up this huge opportunity that maybe something could happen. And if you never tried, you'd never have that possibility, you know? So that's why I like just trying new stuff because like I, I don't really expect like a ton of stuff to work out but I just know that by trying then something really exciting could happen that would never happen otherwise which I really like definitely it's a good message so you aren't doing the apps now but never say never so <laughs> let's 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 hear about the merch what's what's how did this take off yeah so merch is crazy I found out about it by accident I was doing Amazon FBA so I was buying again, you found out about it again by accident <laughs> yeah kind of I know well it's I guess it's not by accident like I kind of I read stuff and I listen I watch Facebook groups and like I'm in communities where people are talking about what interesting things are happening so you know mm -hmm. I kind of come across things so but um yeah so I was doing Amazon FBA which is where you buy physical products in China and you ship them over to the states and you sell them on amazon.com through Amazon's big warehouses and fulfillment centers so I was doing that and that was grand but um I was in a couple of Facebook groups with people talking about this just to kind of keep up to date with what was happening and in one of the groups somebody posted a link to Amazon's new program which is called Merch by Amazon which I'd never heard of and the story is that it's print on demand so you don't need to buy any stock so basically um, you apply for an invitation at merch.amazon.com it's completely free you need to wait a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two to actually get in um, once you get in um, Amazon allows you to upload about 10 designs that will be suitable to put on t-shirts these 10 designs you can make on like apps on your phone you can hire like a proper developer if you want or a designer if you want to make them or you can even just make them yourself if you're used to maybe programs like canva or pickmonkey or photoshop or if you're like good at one particular program that you like so you basically just make 10 pictures on your computer um you upload them to to the merch platform and then like you just write a name and a description, but then your job is done, like literally done. So what Amazon does is once they're up there, Amazon opens the door and puts them up on amazon.com, which is like one of the biggest retail websites in, in the States that I don't know how many zillions of people visit it every day. And so if someone goes to amazon.com and they type in like some keywords that are in your t-shirt, um, your t-shirt can easily just pop up in front of them. And it, it looks just like a t-shirt. It looks like it's already made but all you've done is upload the image, but Amazon, their software, has, they've put this image on a t-shirt. So if somebody sees that t-shirt and they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. And it's $20 or whatever. And they buy it. Um, Amazon, somebody in Amazon's warehouse, like grabs a black t-shirt off the shelf. They put it, they have these huge printing machines. They put it into a printing machine. They print your picture on it and they post it out. And every time somebody buys, um, say for about $20, you get about $7 royalty. So you don't have to do customer service. You don't have to do shipping. You don't have to buy any inventory. Like there's no cost to you to do this other than creating the designs on your computer and then once a month Amazon will give you um, they'll pay you your your royalties whatever they are straight into your bank account sounds amazing yeah it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> so um, does it cost you to to actually get through the merch by Amazon door or no it's free you just apply for an invite merch.amazon.com yeah and then so you, you've just all the cost to you is just literally creating those designs so what do you, do you have to submit them in a certain way or you have they have to be a certain size and a certain specification um amazon don't want like really small sizes because they look really bad on t-shirts when they go and try and print them so there's a template you can just download for free um or they'll just tell you like they tell you the size and they want it transparent and they want a png so it's quite easy just to make up the template yourself as well in photoshop um and yep yeah, that's it then you just have to make sure that what you're uploading is the right size that they tell you to and you know it's not really totally massive and then you're good to go so is, is that where you're making your money now Elaine? Is, is that your business or yeah yeah no that's my my business i'm a t-shirt a merch entrepreneur a t-shirt seller excellent so basically i mean the, the fantastic thing is i mean a friend of mine actually richard he he has a um he has a, a unit where he actually embroiders, you know, corporate work wear t-shirts, but he's actually got the physical t-shirt. So obviously he's buying the t-shirt and he's got the heat presses, sublimation, embroidery machines. You yeah. need nothing like that. Yeah. You just no materials. You don't have to buy anything. Just purely designed royalties. 
Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, I know there's other print on demand platforms out there that you, you can do a similar thing. You can if you have designs, you can just upload for free to those as well, um, which is similar to merch. But you're just like the sales and those are going to be just so small. Usually, if you do that, you've got to then start doing like paid Amazon ads to try and get people over to see your stuff because normally they won't see it because these websites are quite small. Um, but yeah, that's the thing with Amazon is that when you upload to Amazon, they literally give you access to everybody on Amazon.com, um, which is just crazy organic traffic. I guess your your call now is to share this information. So you've got your uh, Merch Entrepreneur podcast. So is that what that's all about, Elaine? Yeah, it is. I kind of share what I've been doing um, uh, on the show. And then also, I kind of really started it because um, I really wanted to hear stories of like other merch entrepreneurs um, and how they got started and how it's kind of helped them and what they're doing. Um, yeah, I just wanted to hear just stories of ordinary people who just kind of somehow discovered merch and were using it like for like an extra side income or maybe they quit their job and now they were doing it full time. And there was there was no podcast either that was doing anything like that. So after wish, wishing for a couple of months that there was, I was like, oh, I'll just have to do it myself. So, um, so yeah, it was fun. It was exciting to do. And yeah, really nice to hear everybody's stories on it. Excellent. So are you, are you just hosting that yourself, Elaine? Or have you got a guest on talking about their um, businesses? Yeah, both. Um, so I'm the host and I have a uh, guest on too. Excellent. So is any is there anyone out there that's doing something really remarkable that you think, oh, I need to get involved in that? Or is, is anyone really smashing it? Um, yeah, no, there's lots of people doing doing really well. Um, it's kind of, it's dependent on time, really. Like the sooner you get started, it takes a while to kind of scale up because at the beginning, Amazon don't give you very many spaces for t-shirts and you have to kind of prove your worth so that they'll only give you like 10 spaces at the beginning and they won't give you any more until you've actually sold 10 t-shirts. So like it takes a while to kind of build it up but then like 10 turns into 25 turns into 100 spaces 500 spaces 2000 spaces 4000 spaces and on it goes so it's yeah it's um it's it's just it's a fun thing to do it's crazy it's like when i was back in school and you had all your serious subjects and then in the middle of it you had art class which you loved because you get just to <laughs> sit there and just like draw pictures and doodle for an hour like it's kind of like that you know so what, what do you have to do to actually um, begin this process? Is it, do you actually have to create a business which has got, you know, everything that everything that comes along with the business in terms of accounts and setting that up? Um, I, I, I don't know. It depends. I mean, in terms the of what you... The tax man is not listening. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know because you have a whole different tax system to me. So um, I don't know. I mean, in terms of actually doing it, all you need is mm-hmm. a name and an email address and a bank number to give to Amazon so they know where to pay you and make some designs and upload them in terms of how you actually manage your business yourself that's up to everybody if you're going to be I guess you have like sole traders over there or whatever so you don't you don't have to have a company or a big registered business like a lot of people just do it part-time and and just it comes in as their normal their normal tax and they just declare it and pay whatever tax they have to on it okay okay what 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 sells best then you know if you're if somebody was listening to this and thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do this what what's uh what's a really popular t-shirt yeah, there's three different types of niches that um, that I, uh, I've i kind of found that work best for me. So the first one is seasonal. So depending when you when you get in, like if it's coming up to Easter or Father's Day or Halloween or Christmas, like you're going to sell a lot of T-shirts if you kind of put those themes into them. The second one is things that people love and professions. So um, anything to do with family, like best grandpa in the world or something. Um, anything to do with people's jobs like if you've got a funny saying for nurses or for teachers or something like that like people if it resonates with them they'll you know they'll go oh that's serious I need a t-shirt um, anything to do with what people love what they're passionate about like pets animals sports that kind of thing and then the third area that's that's worked has been like trending topics so just keeping an eye on the news and seeing like what's actually going on in the world that people are kind of passionate about works pretty well too great so do you do this I mean I know you're a keynote speaker, so is this something you speak about? Uh, no, no, I haven't actually, no, I haven't done any speaking engagements now for a while. I think the last one I did, the Great British Business Show, actually, down in London. I was talking about um, apps, I think, at that one. But uh, but no, I just, I guess my speaking is through the podcast, which is actually much handier because I get to just, like, I don't have to, like, physically go and get planes and stuff and travel anywhere. I can just record at home and, and broadcast it myself, so that works really well. Excellent. Can I just go back to the FBA and the China thing? So is yeah. that something you were doing or, or were you just doing the merch? 
Yeah, no, I was, so I did apps for um, maybe over two years and then I sold that business and then I was doing, started Amazon FBA um, for a while and then sold that business as well. So now it's just merch. I need to know about this FBA. So is it still going on? Is that still yeah. a thing? Yeah, it's still okay. a thing. Yeah, it's a bit trickier right. trickier now though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So can, can you just tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So Amazon has this program called Fulfilled by Amazon, which means that third-party sellers that aren't part of Amazon, like you or me, if we have a product that we want to sell, um, we can actually get access to like the back end of Amazon's doc, like Amazon's main website, and we can upload our product and tell them what price we want it to be, and you know, write a description about it, and put it live, and it'll be for sale on Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk. Now, the way it was before this is that if somebody bought it you had to like go back to your home, find one of these things you were selling and parcel it up and you know post it out of the post office or whatever, which was fine, and then you get paid. So it was kind of like you had an online shop, but your online shop was an Amazon. So a while back, that's a good couple of years at this stage, Amazon um, set up a new opportunity, which was that they, instead of you having to like ship everything yourself, which was fine, but it meant that like, you know, you couldn't go off traveling. You had to physically be at home or, or whatever to like to post off all of these things every day, depending on what came in. So it was kind of like you had a part-time job, like running up and down to the post office. Um, so they set up um, something called these massive fulfillment centers, which meant that instead of you having just to do it yourself, that instead, if you had like 200 units of a product, instead of keeping them like in your living room or something, you could actually send into Amazon. They'd put it in one of their warehouses. And then if somebody bought on Amazon, Amazon themselves would go into the warehouse and pick and pack and send it out for you. Um, so they charge a little bit of an extra fee, but it meant that Amazon were doing fulfillment for you. So then what I was able to do is I was able to source products in China, send them straight to Amazon's warehouse. So they never even came to my house. And then if anybody bought them, then Amazon would just look after everything and um, I would get then uh, whatever was left after their fees. Excellent. So what sort of good things are could you sell through the FBA? You can sell anything you can hold, in, like anything like physical, anything from like sports to um, health and beauty to kitchen stuff. Like literally, like if wherever you're sitting, just look around and anything you can see, you can sell on Amazon, like everything. Like and particularly like I know like Amazon started off with books, but um, and Amazon.co.uk is probably a bit behind Amazon.com, but Amazon.com, like you type in anything you want, it's for sale on Amazon. Do you think that's? Do you think that ship sale now, or is, is it still something people could look at? Uh, it's sailing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it hasn't completely sailed, but it wasn't like. Yeah, it's a lot tougher to get into now than it used to be, and a lot more competitive, uh, and a lot uh, harder to find things that will actually make sense. You know, going through those three three things you've mentioned there, the apps, the FBA and the merch, it seems that you've been in there at the right time and you've just been, you know, you've done your homework, you've done your research, you've found it, you've just jumped on it and, and succeeded. Yeah. 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 And, and how do you think? Oh, sorry. sorry <laughs> no, I was just going to say, yeah, it's with these things, there's kind of, there's kind of a life, not that there's a life cycle in them, but at certain stages, it's easier to get involved and it's easier to scale up for like everybody in the world is doing it. And like, and that's one thing for merch right now, like nobody, literally nobody knows about merch. Anyone I've talked to, I was at a huge conference in Austin there last December, like there was tons of Amazon people there doing really well, doing this kind of fulfillment center stuff. They hadn't heard of merch. <laughs> they were like, I was trying to leave and I couldn't because everyone wanted to figure it out. So um, so yeah, so merch is completely new. And, and so if you can if you can take advantage of something that has a lot of potential, but that also is still just really, really early, you're in such a good position. You mentioned there you were talking to people, you know, who are interested in Amazon. So is that something that they might try and get into now? So they have been maybe interested in FBA and then are people now going to go on the merch side? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely FBA people. Some of them are still doing FBA, but they've started doing merch as well. So yeah, there's they've seen the opportunity yeah. and they're like, yeah, this is actually much easier than FBA. And, you know, whether they, you know, if they've, I don't know if they've stopped doing FBA. Well, no, they probably haven't the ones I was talking or I was talking to were were doing really well in FBA but when I was explaining merch and the differences and they were like oh god yeah we need to do that as well so yeah lots of people starting what's the downsides to that in the lane the merch it sounds it sounds too good to be true um the downside is <laughs> when you apply to get an invite that it's not it's not automatically approved so um, because March, they're actually having problems trying to keep up with capacity and with the people that want to join. And they've only got like the machines that they need for this stuff, like they're half a million dollar machines. And I think they need like three people to work them. So 
in terms of scaling up, they've kind of found they found it hard to kind of keep up with demand with everyone uploading t-shirts and more people wanting to upload t-shirts. So yeah, the downside is when you apply um, that for, well, I think for me, it took about three months that I had to wait until I actually got in, which can be a bit frustrating. But um, but yeah, so you got to be a little bit patient. So what is this amazon.com it goes through? No, merch.amazon.com. It takes 30 seconds to apply for an invite. Right. <laughs> so do it today. <laughs> so it, Right, I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it. <laughs> Brilliant. So is there anything else you could leave us with, Elena? And obviously we've talked about that. That's really, you've enlightened us on that side. Anything else you'd like to share? No, just this is, it's just such a crazy opportunity. Like anyone listening to this show, you are, uh, like most people have never heard about this and probably won't hear about it for like three or four years until it becomes like a thing. So like if you're listening to this, merch.amazon.com, just go put in your free invite. And um, and yeah, if you're interested in learning more, um, the Merch Entrepreneur Podcast, you'll hear lots of stories from different people. And yeah, it's just like, don't listen to this and go, oh, sounds too, no, it could never work. Just just trust me, even regardless of what you think, just go merch.amazon.com, put in your invite. It takes 30 seconds. And then in a couple of months or depending, um, you get your invite, then um, yeah, definitely it's worth taking advantage of, even just as an experiment. It's like me, like everything I've done so far is an experiment. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but by doing it, you open up this possibility that it could actually work really well. Brilliant. You mentioned um, Facebook groups. So you've got a Facebook group, I think, at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, I just go into Facebook and look for Merch Entrepreneur. And in there, you'll find lots of people talking about merch and selling on merch. Excellent. So that's what somebody could do. So they put the invite in. They could jump on, you listen to your podcast, jump on the Facebook page and learn all about it and then become just like Elaine. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you'll end up as crazy as me, but uh, hopefully not. <laughs> Excellent. Elaine, well, thanks very much for your time. It's been brilliant. Best of luck going forward. Thank you very much. No, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks to Elaine there. If ever there was a side hustle, this is it. Let me know if you request an invite to Amazon merch. Let me know if you're currently selling merch through Amazon or any other channels. I'll help you and I'll leave you a link on the show notes. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that, you know, diverse as ever. Let me know how business is going for you. This is March and I want to know how 2017 is faring up already. You can reach us on the Industry Angel Facebook page. Be sure to leave us a review on iTunes as well. Are you one of the tens of thousands of downloads that hasn't left a review? So I'd love it if you could. So keep in touch. And until next time, I'm Ian Farah. This is the Industry Angel. And thanks for listening.